Hello there, so jumping right in, the supplies I'm using in today's video are the Strathmore Bristol Smooth Paper, the Prismacolor Colored Pencils, and I already have my color palette all picked out, my tried and true Mobius and Rupert Pencil Sharpener, a big block eraser, my Birds of Florida book where I found my inspiration for this drawing, and of course my handy dandy easel. So one of my biggest tips for working with colored pencil is to make sure that your final sketch is correct before going in with color. I personally like to use a really really light color like this light peach. You can also try the color cream or lilac. I found that those also work really well. I think it is really easy to get a bit excited and want to go right in with color, but I found that holding off and doing a bit more preliminary work really helps your finished work look its best. So just doing some small studies in your sketchbook before you move on to the final piece can also help take any of that guesswork out because colored pencil is quite difficult to erase once it's put down and layered and blended and whatnot. So making sure you have things correct from the start will take you very far. For this piece, I'm using references from the Birds of Florida book. I have my laptop off to the side and I've already sketched several pages worth of birds. And now all of this has allowed for my final drawing onto the nice paper to go really smoothly, quite literally. So once I have my sketches finalized and placed where I'd like them to go on the paper, I will go in and erase majority of the sketch for the first part of the drawing I'll be working on. And this is why I like to use my block eraser rather than a kneaded eraser because the block just does a great job of removing color efficiently with just a few passes. So since I've taken the time to make sure my drawing was correct, I can now go right in with color. I've also done myself a huge favor by picking out my color palette beforehand. And this also helps take a lot of guesswork out because I know a lot of packs of pencils, like especially Prismacolor pencils, can come with like 100 plus pencils in a set. And that can be overwhelming and also tempting to use as many colors as possible right from the start. But trust me when I say that choosing a limited palette will help you out so much in the long run. As far as actually laying down some color, I will do my best to put down a light layer of pencil and then build upon it. But I will fully admit that I have a heavy hand and as long as I'm not pressing so hard that the tip of the pencil is breaking or creating those waxy blooms on the page, then I say I'm in good shape. Now with this section on the flamingo, I cannot figure out why the camera picked it up like this but I promise it looks so much better in real life or on really any other camera, so please disregard the muddy flamingo. Thanks. Moving on, using colored pencils is definitely a lengthy process that requires a lot of patience and time because building up color can be tedious. I do, however, think that the outcome of taking your time is so worth it because it allows for colors to blend better and prevents large swatches of color from looking streaky. So all in all, it makes the finished piece look its absolute best. That brings me to my next big tip, which is patience. I think that being patient when working with any medium is important, but especially colored pencils. The end result can vary drastically if the layering process was rushed or not. With this part of the drawing, I wanted to do quite a bit of layering because this bird had a lot of darker sections that faded into light. So taking the time to lay down those initial layers of pencil followed by more layers on top, I was able to create some really nice gradients. If I had rushed those first layers, I most likely would have ended up with wax blooms all over because the paper just isn't meant to endure that much wax-based pencil in just a few strokes. So patience really is the secret to getting rich color because these pencils work best when they build upon each other layer by layer. I should also mention that there is a difference between layering and blending. 
Layering is when you layer one color on top of another in order to create a new hue. As you can see, I'm doing that here. So up close, it looks like a mix of two colors, but from a distance, it looks like a different color altogether. Whereas blending is the process of laying down two colors next to each other and gradually kind of meshing them together like I did on majority of the body of this bird. A tip that I find to be incredibly helpful is to have a piece of paper off to the side that allows you to put swatches down and see how certain colors blend together. I love having this almost as a guide to see how certain colors do or don't work together. I already had my color palette all planned out for this piece, but I still found that making these little swatches on a scrap sheet of Bristol allowed for me to discover some interesting color combinations that I wouldn't have used otherwise. That brings me to my next tip, which is the importance of paper. So if you want your work to come out nice and smooth and almost creamy, then I highly recommend this Bristol Smooth paper or any hot press paper really. Uh, hot press means that it has very little texture, so your pencils will lay on it quite nicely and also blend together a lot better compared to cold press paper, which has more tooth to it or texture. So you would see more of those little white spots show up since the tip of the pencil isn't able to get into all those little grooves on a piece of cold press paper. I definitely think both types are great and can be used for colored pencil, but I typically use a nice smooth hot press paper. I like for my pieces to have almost that, you know, creamy look to them and that is achieved usually with hot press. I think it does come down to personal preference on what you're striving for and really just experimenting with both types of paper to figure out how you can achieve that desired look. Speaking of experimenting, my next tip is to do just that, experiment. Find out what works for you and what doesn't. Do you like layering cool tones over warm to create your shadows? Do you have a favorite brand of pencils? Do you like for there to be a lot of texture in your work? These are all questions you could have the answer to if you experiment with this medium and learn to love it in the same way that I have. This tip goes with really any medium, but experimenting is just so, so important because you can't really improve at anything if you don't try to learn the best way that works for you. I personally believe that colored pencils are one of the most rewarding mediums out there. Just because of all that time you spend working on a piece and building and layering and blending, all just leading to a beautiful result. My final tip is the simplest of them all, but probably the most important, and that is to keep a piece of paper under your hand as you work. For a majority of this drawing, I've had a piece of notebook paper under my hand to not only prevent smudging my work, but also to protect the drawing from the oils in my skin. To recap, my top tips for working with colored pencils are to make sure your drawing is correct before going in with full color. By the way, I highly recommend following this rule with everything you make regardless of the medium. Doing your sketch in a light color, using a block eraser to effectively erase your sketch, limiting your color palette, not pressing too hard while also being patient, having scrap paper for testing swatches, as well as a sheet under your hand as you work. And finally, experiment with things like paper and blending versus layering to find out what works best for you. And here is the finished piece in all of its beautiful glory. I'm so happy with how it turned out and I would definitely love to do more of these colored pencil drawing videos in the future. So let me know if you'd want to see more of those as well. I hope you have learned a thing or two on my process using colored pencils. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!